What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you a very simple make.com automation that I created four or five months ago that's been generating well over 15 to $20,000 every single month, like basically clockwork. And it's incredibly simple. Um, there are two components to this system. The first is we have GPT-4 OpenAI, which is filtering and processing the jobs for me, which I'll show you in a sec. And then we also have Airtable, which is where I'm dumping all of the records into. Uh, and that's what that looks like. And so in the next few minutes, I'm just gonna walk through exactly how I built this, my rationale for building it, um, and how it actually like makes me the money that it makes me. So let's get into things. First things first, um, there is an RSS feed module, which you can use to connect to Upwork. Upwork has um, an RSS feed kind of feature that allows freelancers and people applying to jobs like me to create very specific job queries using Boolean connectors, and then just query the RSS feed like every hour or two to see if there are jobs that match those specifications. So I'm gonna leave the link in the video description. Feel free to poke around and kind of learn more about the way that RSS feeds work in Upwork, but suffice to say, it's just a way to get away from the um, Upwork kind of user uh, interface and then kind of, you know, do things at scale uh, outside of it. And so you see here at the very top, I have a URL set up. It's HTTPS www.upwork.com slash AB slash feed slash jobs slash RSS. That's kind of like the, the syntax. And then question mark Q equals, and this is the query that we're putting in. And all I did was I put in automate. The purpose of this was to be as broad as humanly possible for my target category because um, I'm doing the filtering later on using AI. So I, you know, if you think about it logically, it makes sense to go as wide as humanly possible on the front end, so the top of your funnel is really wide, and then to narrow it down uh, using AI. There's no point to filter ahead of time here because, you know, I've just, I've just been, I've just sort of like um, accepted that I'm going to use AI to do this filtering. I'm sorting based off recency. That just means that uh, the most recent jobs come first. Makes sense, right? Because people on Upwork typically just hire within the first 24 hours. If you're there within the first 24 hours, great. If you're there within the first two hours, even better. Um, job type is both hourly and then fixed budget. And then I have just a list of sort of like price ranges here that I'm acceptable, uh, that I'm accepting with a few, um, you know, API parameters and that sort of thing. So yeah, I'm uh, returning 200 items at a time. Uh, honestly, it's normally like 10 or 15 because I query, um, as you see here, once every 90 minutes. So I usually don't need to go any more than that. In terms of the rest of this automation, exactly how it works. First, I'm parsing the description. Uh, that's just because the description comes through in HTML. So I use a parse description HTML to text module, which you can find right down here, to turn uh, that HTML just into plain text and then strip away you know, all that stuff. The next module is basically the secret sauce of the entire system. And this is why uh, it works so exceedingly well. There's a module here that I've just called filter job. And it's this module here. If you go to OpenAI and then you go to uh, create a completion, yeah, there you go, Create a creates a completion for the provided prompt or chat, so it's this one here. Um, and then you access, I always like to use the GPT-4-0613 endpoint, although, you know, you might be watching this like a year from now, in which case I'm sure there's like plenty of other endpoints, maybe in GPT-5, who knows. Um, and so, you know, if you want to always be using the most up-to-date one, then just for model select uh, GPT-4 instead of a specific model number. And then here's the prompt that I've set up. I have a system prompt that says you're an intelligent administrator that filters jobs. Then next, I have a user prompt that basically just explains who I am and what I do. What sorts of jobs am I looking for? Now I pitch myself as an operations agency. I mean, really, I'm sort of like a one-man consultancy at the moment, but I just find it performs better this way. Uh, that builds out outreach systems, CRM systems, project management systems, no-code systems, and integrations. So just giving it some, some background context. And then I'm giving it some instructions. Below is a job description. Filter it for relevance, true or false, in JSON. Some of the platforms we use include, and then I just give it a big list of platforms that I'm familiar with. If relevant, write a short introductory icebreaker. This is important because it saves me a ton of time applying to these jobs. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. Then I say, note, API integrations are good since we can develop them using no code. We don't develop full stack apps. We don't use Python, Telegram, blah, blah, blah. We don't work on very tiny projects. These are basically just things that you would say, hey, you know, I'm not interested in this. You know, mark these as irrelevant. And that's just because all of the projects that I've ever done on these platforms tend to suck. People just don't really understand what's involved. They charge way too much money, that sort of thing. And then for the icebreaker or introduction component, I have some example client projects here that I've worked on. And I just use that as sort of just like a, you know, draw from this um, when you're when you're pitching. 
Now, the next thing I do is I just give it a bunch of examples. GPT-4 and other related la language uh, models tend to perform really well after you give them at least two or three examples of the input that you'll be giving it and then the desired output. And so in this way, it's called like in-context learning. You're basically like training it uh, just within one prompt window to you know, learn and kind of like assess your preferences here. So for instance, this is um, me role user, and then I just paste it in an Upwork job description exactly how it comes from um, the Upwork RSS feed, so it learns the formatting. And then the way that I am uh, pushing this out is I have like an assistant uh, prompt next, and then I teach it basically what JSON format I want it to use. So result in this case is false. Reason, this is about writing nothing to do with systems, and then icebreaker, because it's uh, false, there's no icebreaker. The reason to do it this way, and the reason to have it write a reason, is both because you want it to kind of walk you through its thought process, so to speak, um, if you ever need to do any debugging or logging. Uh, it costs like an exceedingly small amount of money to do this, just like a few extra cents, uh, well, probably like a portion of a cent or something like that. Um, and then I find the performance is usually a little bit higher if it has to like speak through its own rationale. Uh, and then I just, yeah, I just like rinse and repeat. Basically all I did was I just ran the RSS feed once and then I just looked at the jobs and I manually categorized them and then yeah, I did this like four or five times. Um, this is an example of a job that looks good to me. Airtable expert needed. I do tons of work in Airtable. If you didn't already guess by the fact that this whole RSS feed system is built in Airtable. Um, this is what the output is going to look like. So result true. Reason involves automating Airtable which aligns their experience in systems and no code tools. Icebreaker. And then I have a very particular uh, sort of like approach I like to take to applying to these jobs where I'll always say something like, hey, I'm confident I'm the guy you need for this. And it's very putting my balls on the table, so to speak, uh, but I find it works extremely well. And then I'll always put some like huge social proof sort of deal. So in this case, I use Airtable to manage a copywriting company that is around 800K a year. We make heavy use of interfaces and well, that's actually more now. We make heavy use of interfaces and some less known Airtable features. I also routinely build Airtable flows, databases, et cetera. So um, if you guys kind of see what, where I'm going with this, I'm using it to build like a brief little introductory icebreaker that'll seem very customized to the job specifics uh, that I can just use to paste into the application window. Next is some more examples, more examples, and I'm not gonna beat a dead horse, but suffice to say at the very end, what I finally do is I have one user prompt with the title and then the description that I'm pulling from the RSS feed. I have a token count at 250 with like a pretty low temp because I want it to be uh, pretty consistent. And then, yeah, and then I'm off to the races. Now the best way to work with GPT-4 or just like any type of AI completion models that are outputting in JSON, so always just add a parse JSON module after. So go down here and click parse JSON. It's just connected hypothetically. The JSON string that you're looking for is under choices, message, content. And you can already see it here. So all this parse JSON module is going to do is it's going to turn result false into basically like a make.com object like this. Reason, whatever, result, false, icebreaker, yada, yada. And that's just so that we can use it later on. Then uh, I check to see if the job is relevant. If it is, we can proceed. Uh, if so, then we will get the budget of the job using just a bunch of like, um, I guess like true or false switch stuff. So if description contains the word hourly range, then it's probably an hourly range job. If it doesn't contain the word hourly range, then it's probably a fixed price job. If it's an hourly range job, then we're getting the split of a get of a split, the word description divided by, you know, or cut by this hourly range thing. I'm not gonna go super deep into that um, because, you know, Upwork tends to change this every once in a while. And so sometimes I gotta jump in here every few months and then make, make a few edits. Uh, and then just because of the way that the, like in my Upwork RSS feed, I have a column called, um, like budget, and then I have another one called like hourly range. So just because of the way that I've set my own up, I need a router here that cuts between hourly and then project-based jobs. And then if it's an hourly job, then I'll set a payment model to equal to hourly. I'll set a budget min, budget max, all the stuff here, uh, which basically just pulls from fields in the RSS feed. And at the end of it, I'll add an hourly job where I'll get the title. Um, I'm removing the word Upwork just because there's no point to including that. Upwork always appends the word Upwork to all their jobs. The description that we parsed earlier, the date posted, introduction is an icebreaker, and uh, the icebreaker is what we generated previously. And then you'll also see that I have a template here. And uh, the template is just like a copy and paste thing that's very long and very exhaustive. And my rationale behind this on Upwork is always, the vast majority of people are only gonna read the first paragraph and think, ah, oh, this guy really knows his stuff, I gotta work with him. But there are some people out there that need just a little bit more context. And for the people that need a little bit more context, I'll always just like add a giant like 
almost like a CV essay style thing. Uh, and so this is what my one of my templates looks like. I offer some case studies and that sort of deal, uh, which is pretty helpful. Uh, then I offer the job link and then the min budget, max budget, country, skills, whatever. And I click OK. All right. So that is the make automation. You see there are some remnants of other systems that I've built and other approaches. This is still very much a draft, so just kept these down here. But ideally, you would clean this up a little more. I'm going to save my changes because, uh, you know, I made a couple of tiny ones there. And then I'll go back to this Upwork RSS feed. And here's what it looks like and how it works. We got the title in this column, the description in this column. I've added a status field equal to intake for all new jobs that come in. And this is just so that I know which jobs have applied to, which ones I haven't. So there's intake, applied, irrelevant, no longer available. There's a button here with a, a URL column. And if I click this, I basically go directly to that Upwork job. Uh, then there's also space for a Loom video. Now I don't do Loom video for every application, but there's some applications out there that are very, very high value. I'm talking like 15, 20, $30,000 in, you know, let's say a three month period. Uh, for jobs that I feel or I intuit that are extremely high value, what I'll do is I'll actually jump on that page. I'll click that Loom button, which I'm not going to do now because it would screw up my reporting. Uh, and then I will just like explain who I am and what I do. And then when I'm done with that, I will paste in the video URL right here. So let's just say this is hypothetically a Loom URL. I'll paste it in. And then there's a copyable message um, column where all I need to do is just copy it and then paste it into the job description. And here's what it looks like. Hi, here's a video I just recorded to walk you through this and a few other systems I run for seven figure companies. Then I just paste the video in. Um, so this copyable message is basically like a formula field which concatenates whatever my introduction is, uh, the video URL, and then the template at the very end. Um, and so this way it's literally just like, hey, copy, paste, copy, paste. If anybody has any additional questions to um, you know, anything that I've done or, or whatnot, or maybe they just ask additional questions like the upper question field. I mean, I'll, I'll do them manually, um, but a lot of the time I'll just like copy the Loom video URL in those cases and I'll just say, hey, you know, I'd love it if you just took a look at this. This is going to blow your mind. Uh, and I always just lead like extremely, extremely strong because I find that that helps. Um, okay, great. So to answer some probable questions here, if you've made it this far, what is the reason why you do an approach like this as opposed to just do it all on Upwork? Well, there are a couple. The first is that uh, you get to track everything. Upwork is an awesome platform, but it does certainly lack a few tracking features, which make it difficult to know how many proposals have I sent in the last little while, how much money have I gotten from these proposals, um, what proportion of my searches are like irrelevant or, or whatnot. Um, number two, on Upwork itself, their filtering process is kind of, it's like procedural, it's based off keywords, and so you can't actually get flexible like we can with AI. Like because I use an AI filter, for instance, um, I can, if a job has the word Airtable in it, you know, if I'm doing things procedurally and I try and like look for a keyword like Airtable and use that to add to the thing, it'll always just add that to my Upwork RSS feed, right? But if I use AI to do it, AI is flexible enough that it'll look at it and, say, and see the word Airtable and it'll say, hmm, this job may have the word Airtable in it, but is it a project about like building systems for Airtable? It might not be. Maybe it's just, uh, you know, like recipient needs to understand Airtable, but it's actually a job about social media marketing or something. But that happens extremely, extremely commonly. And so Upwork still uses these procedural filters for the most part. Um, by getting your data into another platform like Airtable, we are capable of using artificial intelligence to filter the jobs and then just to give us a little bit of a helping hand. Uh, the other benefit is, of course, we can uh, proceduralize a lot of the icebreaker stuff. So we can apply to jobs significantly faster than if we were just doing everything in Upwork. Uh, keep in mind that the vast majority of people on Upwork are going to be copy and pasting applications and that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, competition-wise, a little bit of customization always goes a long way. But I've personally found this to be a really good balance between just like high volumes of applications and then uh, still maintaining like a reasonable level of quality. And then providing the ability to record a Loom video is super important too because, yeah, like, I mean, I, I think the average value of a lot of my Upwork contracts for automation and co consultation and operations and stuff probably around... Uh, like $2,000, but every once in a while one will come by that's like 15 grand, or maybe it's like a recurring relationship, where now I have like a bunch of clients that have been paying me three, four, five, six thousand dollars for the last half year. Like the value of that contract, 36K, if it even gives me a 1% higher likelihood of getting it by recording a quick little Loom video that takes me like literally two minutes, then I'm going to do it. And this system allows me just to do all of that while also still maintaining um, a high velocity. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. Uh, again, we got the Airtable here.
Then we have the Upwork RSS jobs to Airtable um, system over here. If anybody has any questions about how this stuff works or just wants to bounce some ideas off me, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, otherwise, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will catch you on the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.